Calacanis. Jason, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, my, my first question is, does it matter? Because uh, I don't think the president-elect is taking to Twitter at this point to win popularity contest. He's targeting his pressure at certain companies on certain issues, exciting his base. Does it matter? Well, you know, the great thing for Trump is that when he tweets, there's no vetting process, there's no fact-checking. He can talk directly to the tens of millions of Americans who want to burn down the existing system in Washington to drain the swamp and start over. And those people love him, and they love his attacking, bullying tweets. And, you know, those tweets are effective uh, in the short term, perhaps in a negotiation, but in the long term, I think every civil... Uh, adult and probably most kids understand that bullying people and berating people into doing what you want is not as effective as collaborating and inspiring people uh, to solve these big problems. The uh, interesting thing is he's going to gain tens of millions of followers on his personal account uh, while president. He refuses to use the POTUS account. He's going to use real Donald Trump. If he adds 20, 30 million followers, which was a pretty uh, conservative estimate over the next four years, uh, I think the value of that is one to two dollars per subscriber. That's what you would pay in Google's ad network, I'm sorry, Twitter's ad network for those followers. So he's going to gain a 20 or 30 or 40 million dollar asset. Uh, and then I don't think anybody's talking about that right now. That to me seems inappropriate. And you know, it's, it's not a very collaborative approach, which is how our government has but typically Jason. worked. So if you're burning down the system, maybe it's great. It's not new yes. to bypass bureaucracy to try and take your message directly to the people. FDR did it in his fireside chats on radio. Reagan did it with direct TV addresses. How is this different? Yeah, I think it's different because of the tone and the inaccuracies. Um, you know, if you are going to use the medium to bully people and attack people and then not talk about specifics and plans, you're, you're basically just involved in... Um, personal attacks. We need to be working on ideas. And I think that was part of why people thought Trump would be uh, an interesting, and some people obviously think he's going to be a great president because they voted for him. We need to talk about the ideas, not attack people personally with sad and losers and all this other nonsense that he's involved in. Nobody wants that from a leader. It's pathetic, um, and it's not the way we want to see uh, anybody treat other people. We want to talk about ideas, and, and that's what's really missing in this. You know, attacking the intelligence service before even meeting with them, which we talked on my last appearance about, is unforgivable in my mind. If you really thought that our intelligence community had issues, the people who put their lives at risk, you would meet with them three, four, five times in private and try to understand their perspective right. and then possibly go public to put pressure on them. But to put pressure on people and attack people before even meeting with them, it screams of uh, immaturity and just a horrible leadership uh, ability, which is why the polls are showing people want Trump to turn off and delete his account. Well, to, to the extent uh, that, that uh, many people believe these polls, uh, we'll see how it pans out. Uh, moving on, as Netflix prepares Fake to release news. fourth quarter <laughs> results after the close today, the streaming giant also announcing a deal with Jerry Seinfeld to bring his Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee series away from Sony's Crackle and onto their platform, along with several other comedy projects from Seinfeld. Uh, Jason, consolidation of power here by Netflix, I mean, the only big reason I had to turn to Crackle was Seinfeld in a car. Yeah, I mean, 98% of the people listening to our voices do not know what Crackle is. Um, podcasting and web series have now become uh, sort of the development league for these big um, networks and over-the-top services. Netflix is going to spend $6 billion on content. You know, if they're making $2 billion a quarter, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that 75 cents of every dollar they earn. They're pumping back into content. This is a level of investment that has never been seen before and is turning uh, the entertainment industry just on its head. If you look at a company like HBO, which has done some pretty, pretty expensive projects, whether it's Game of Thrones or Vinyl, rest in peace, uh, you know, they're spending $500 million and, they, and they say maybe in 2018 they'll spend a billion. Uh, Jason, so this is a level of spending that's unprecedented. Jason, why didn't Apple do this? I mean, we've got Jimmy Ivey, we were just talking about this yesterday, talking about, you know, if South Park comes to him, he wouldn't turn them away. I mean, apparently Jerry Seinfeld was on the market. Why didn't they snatch that up? Should they have? 
Yeah, clearly uh, Apple has been, you know, sort of feeling their way around this space and thinking about it, reaching out to people. They're doing a reality TV show about apps and investing in apps. Um, and so I think we'll see Apple, you know, start to ramp up. They tend to move slow, as we all know. They, they don't want to be the first person up the hill. They wait for things to be established. But you can imagine, uh, dovetailing with the Trump conversation, when all this money gets repatriated, uh, Apple could just go crazy and buy Netflix or start competing head to head with them. The idea of Apple spending a couple of billion dollars a year if they repatriate a hundred billion dollars is nothing. And boy, would that make this Apple uh, subscription service that I've talked about before, an Apple version of Amazon Prime where you get iCloud, you get protection for your devices, and you get music, and you don't have to make any decisions and get video too. People would pay 15 bucks a month for that, and we could see 70, 80, 90, 100 million subscribers, you know, on top of the $25 billion a year app business that Apple right. has. So don't count Apple back. So, and the fact that Trump is going to bring all this money back is going to change everything in technology <laughs> and media. So with earnings after the bell, it's what are you watching? Ground, International subscriber numbers? Are you watching uh, domestic yeah. still? What do you think investors should have their eye on here? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing about Netflix is, is simply the number of subscribers, the churn, and it'll be spiky. Sometimes you'll see them, you know, you know beat a target by a million or, or miss it by 500,000. If you look at the trend line, it's the slow and steady doubling of revenue every couple of years, and it's not going away. When these subscription services get momentum, it takes a long time for them to unwind. Remember dial-up right. with AOL and hitting over 30 million subscribers. That took a decade you know, even more to, to unwind uh, itself when right. dial-up went away. So Netflix, you know, as they grow, it takes a long time for these subscriptions to go away. So even if they completely screwed it up, you know, this is going to be one of the great companies of our time. This is going to be a Google or Facebook level company, I believe. I think it's going to be worth hundreds of billions of dollars, and I believe they're going to have 200 or 300 million people subscribing to this thing in 10 years because the investment level is so bold and so courageous, and the content is coming out so good. Uh, they, they've nailed something, which is people want episodic 40, 50 minute content, not movies. Yeah. All of the great actors of our time are moving to do creative of projects course. that are risk taking yep. and not for everybody. This puts them at a tremendous advantage over the networks. One last thing, Jason, it occurs to us that um, yes. you berate Trump for his aggressive practices on social media, but you salivate yes. when it comes to the repatriation he has in mind for corporate America. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. <laughs> Listen, Trump is going to do two or three amazing things. I think there's a 10% chance he's going to be a great president. We have a really interesting joke that's going around Silicon Valley. Trump is either going to last zero terms or seven. Uh, nobody knows what is going to happen. It's complete chaos. We can all sit here and talk about what Trump's going to do, but we are in black swan territory, and it's going to be a crazy ride. Buckle up, everybody. Nobody knows what is going to happen. Don't we long for those times when everybody knew exactly what was going to happen? Thank you, Jason Calacan. Well, we had a pretty fair idea. Things were a little more predictable, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is insane.